Good morning, everyone. Morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My word of encouragement this morning, the title is, How Do We Live Life to the Fullest? I have uh, 10 Bible verses, starting with Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Yes. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yes, John. John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Yes. Jesus. Jeremiah 29.11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Yes. yes. Plans for welfare and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. Yes. Psalm 16, verse 11. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Fullness. Yes. At your right, At your right hand are pleasures pleasure forevermore. Evermore. My Lord. Colossians 3, 23. Whatever you do, work heartily. As for the Lord, As and not for the Lord. Mm. Yes. Hallelujah. Matthew 6, 33 and 34. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and yes. all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. That's mm-hmm. right. Today is its own trouble. Troubles. That's right. Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I I say rejoice. rejoice. Matthew 8, 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness. Mm. Thank you, God. Light of life. In Matthew 28, 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Thank you. Take, the yoke up, take my yoke upon you and yes. lean, learn from me, mm-hmm. for I am gentle and humble in heart. Right. Yes. yes. will find rest for your souls. Mm. The yoke is easy and my burden is Earth light. Is light. Mm. But there is only one way to live a full life, and that's by following God's word. Yes. Amen. 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 God bless Praise you the name Lord. of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Here come in to share the scripture reading with us that will be the center piece of what we're going to talk about today is the marshals. Come on in, Brother Alfred and Sister Linda. Amen. Yeah, it'll be just me reading today. Uh, I'm All right. From the King James Version, Galatians 5, 1 to 15. Uh-huh. Uh, Galatians 5, 1 to 15. Yes. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and not, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Yes. Behold, behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Mm. Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law. Ye are fallen from grace. Mm -hmm. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Mm -hmm. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcised Schism availeth anything nor, nor uncircumcision. All right. But, nor. but faith which worketh by love. Mm-hmm. Ye, did, ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Mm-hmm. The persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little laden, laden. The whole lump. Mm. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you that ye 
will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? All right. Mm -hmm. Then is the offense of the cross ceased. My Lord. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. Mm -hmm. Brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to do the flesh by, but by love serve one another. Yes. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even one in word. This. Yes. Even in this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. right. But if ye bite and endeavor one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Right. Take heed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. To the marshals, God bless you, Sister Linda, for sitting in the background. We know sometimes it's not easy, but we praise God. She has a cold, that's why she... Um, yes, all right, her, so her we cold. praise <laughs> but she can listen in this morning. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Folks, yeah. I want to talk to you about getting to the root of the problem today. That's my title. Get into the root of the problem. What seemed to be the issue? We look into the world. We look into the TV cameras. We look in and we see issues. And we say, what's the root of the problem? There is a root. You see, too many times we as believers pray about the fruit. We pray the fruit. The fruit must stop. We must stop this fruit. We must stop. But what is the root problem? What is the root problem? And, and if I were to summarize the entire Bible and the entire uh, book of the Word of God, I would, in, I, would, I would challenge us to see it as relationship, the one word. God created you and I for relationship. That's right. Jesus came to earth to make possible a relationship, and with his spirit in our hearts, we can have relationship one with another. Mm -hmm. Relationships are far more important than money, far more important than success. Mm -hmm. They're far more important than any accomplishment or achievement that you will ever do. Right. Relationships are more important today, hallelujah, than prestige or status. In fact, the Bible says that if I'm a success in every other area of life, except relationships, I'm a failure. Galatians 5.14, which was just read to you. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Paul says, if I have not love, I am nothing. All these other things matter, but they don't matter most. And without love, they don't matter at all. Mm. We all like to think we're great at loving people. Facebook has shown us that lie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Many of the times when we think we're loving... We're not being loved at all. Mm. How do you know if you're good at loving? Simple. Ask this question. Does anybody in the world feel loved by me? Wow. We never ask that question, do we? Mm. We always ask the question, does anybody love me? Mm. Well. And we spend most of our lives trying to get people to love us. Okay. I go on Facebook and say, would you like me, please? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I hear that. Oh, we want yeah. people to respect us. 
We want people to value us. And we want to meet our needs. God says, no, you got it all backwards. Exactly. The measure of greatness is, does anybody feel love by me? Am I a loved person? All right. Not do I receive it, but do I give it? All right. Amen. The Bible also teaches us that relationships are never easy because we're all sinners. And we all say, Amen. Yes. Right. Amen. Yeah. We're all imperfect. We have all blown it. We have all made mistakes. There are no perfect relationships because there are no perfect people. All right. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 20 says, There's no one on earth who does what is right all the time and never makes a mistake. Come on here. Nobody. Okay. Nobody. As a result of that, our relationships are imperfect. We long for good relationships. Do we ever? Every human being wants to have meaningful relationships. Every human being has a desire to be fully known and to know others fully. Amen. To be understood. And to understand. And in all our feeble attempts, we try to get along. Mm. We, try, we try to build deep relationships. We try to understand each other. But most of the time, it just doesn't work out. Mm. Do you ever get to a point, folks? And does anybody ever get to a point? You so fully understand human behavior and you so understand that person that you understand them completely and you feel for their needs and you always meet their needs completely and therefore there never are any conflicts or arguments. Mm. Please don't lift your hand. I know that's right. <laughs> that's right. right. <laughs> Is that ever? Oh, that's right. If anybody in here today has got to that stage in life, mm, mm, mm. I invite you to step forward and preach this message. Come on. Teach us. Teach us. Do you ever get frustrated in your relationships? <laughs> Do you ever get frustrated knowing that they could be better, but they're not? Mm. Does it ever frustrate you that you know what relationships ought to be? But there aren't. Okay. Does it ever bother you when you realize the potential of your relationships and you're nowhere near them? Not even close. What is the reality? The reality is there's always two natures inside of you. Your new nature as a believer and your old nature which wants to sin. Constantly fight it. Galatians 5.17 says the old sinful nature loves to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Holy Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite to what the sinful nature desires. And these two forces are constantly fighting each other. Yeah. And your choices are never free from this conflict. Never. As long as you live on earth, which is an imperfect place... You will never be free from the tension of good and evil. Amen. So what is the real problem then, Pastor, in our relationships? What's the problem? When you boil it down, down the root of every problem is self-centeredness. My God. Well, oh, yeah. It is behind every conflict. Every conflict. Preach. Every 50-year marriage. All right. Every argument <laughs> and every relational strain. That's it. Self centeredness. My God. In one and two said, Do you know where fights and arguments come, come from, from? Among you. Okay. Come from the selfish desires that war within you. You want things, but you do not have them, so you argue and you fight. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Here's that age-long rivalry between the rich and the poor. The rich man gets the attention. The poor man is ignored. 
The rich man is honored. The poor man is disgraced. Mm. How tragic it is when local assemblies get their values confused and cater to the rich. Mm. While they ignore or even reject the poor. My, my. If fellowship in a church, folks, depends on such external things, such as clothing and what you wear and my your my status, mm, you're in trouble. That the church is out of the will of God. My, my. Mm -hmm. You need a major realignment of your own motivation. And we've got some serious work to do. Yes, Lord. As a church. A major realignment of your own motivation. Do you know how I felt after I considered to have done a noble deed? I feel noble. Hmm. I feel like, as, I, as my wife would say to me, what, you want a parade? Okay. <laughs> I feel like I want a parade. I've done something noble. Help us, Lord. <laughs> Help us. We want parades. Help us, Jesus. We're having the grandiest time patting ourselves on the back. Okay. If we need a parade for doing the right thing. Help us. Help us, Father. <laughs> yes, help us. We don't understand. It's Help us, Jesus. centeredness, isn't it? Yes, Nancy. It is. Yes. It's centered. All about self, right? All about. All Do you know what the number word for noble is? Can I just tell you this morning? Come Stick on, it Kansas. in a the fridge. Self-centered. Wow. And at that moment, I'm sinning. Yes. Can you do the right thing with the wrong reason? Absolutely. Yes. 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 Can you even do good things with a selfish motive? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Folks. Self-centeredness stains everything we do. Everything. Even when we're doing good stuff, we're going to ourselves, boy, gee, aren't we good? I'm wonderful. We're so good. <laughs> Being a servant right now. Mm -mm. <laughs> you're being unselfish. Come on. Yes. You can't even be humble without getting proud about it. Wow. Just wow. like said, get my new bestseller book, Humility and How to Get It. <laughs> Every area of our lives is stained with self-centeredness. My, my. No, it's not my nature to think of you. That's not my nature. Not one of you stayed up late this week worrying about my problems. Not one. You weren't even worrying about my needs. Why? You weren't even thinking about my needs. Mm -hmm. I, I prayed for you, though. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was, Bishop. I was. Amen. It, it, but it's human nature to think only of ourselves. It's human nature. It is unnatural for us to think of other people. That's right. Right? I know you prayed for me because that's not the natural thing. That's the Holy Spirit thing. There you go. Man. If you don't think that, you're kidding yourself this morning. Mm-hmm. Because you think about you more than you think about anyone else. Anybody in the world. else. Wow. That's the wow. truth. <laughs> Listen to these comments. Write them down. How do I look? Okay. Mm -hmm. Come on now. How, how do I talk? Mm-hmm. How, how do I appear? Mm. What is my image? Mm. Wow. Did I post the right picture on Facebook? Did I put the right picture on Facebook? Did Help I, us, I, Jesus. I do, <laughs> am, I, am I cool? Mm. People like me. All right. Am I rejected? Mm -hmm. Am I accepted? You think of yourself all the time. All the time. <laughs> wow. People that you supposedly love, you <laughs> think about yourself first. It's true. It's true. Help us, Jesus. That's why you have arguments with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it. 
The root of every problem is self-centeredness. Self-centeredness. Secretly, we think we're pretty good if our outward behavior conforms to accepted standards. Uh Wow. We we do the right thing and even put on a smiley face. Okay. (laughs) And appear like we are doing it. But we're that's doing what, it. Wow. We need a parade. Look at me. I'm doing the right thing. God looks at your heart. Mm-hmm. You're on fire, Bishop. You're on fire. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Jesus yes, told sir. the first All right. Listen to this, folks. He said, you guys look great on the outside. Oh, mm. come on here. What did he tell them? A mess. A mess. Outwardly, you got this whitewash look. Mm, mm, mm. Now, but inside, come on, <laughs> but inside, come on, Bishop. Great, you look great, but inside you are a tomb of full of you dead stink. carcasses stink. that are you rotted. Stink. You stink. Thank you. Help us. <laughs> we stink on the inside. Oh my God! <laughs> Help us. Jesus told the Pharisees. You know what you guys do? Mm. Mm. You wash the bowl and the cup on the outside. Oh, mm. help. Mm. Side is still filthy. All you right. in the book this All morning, right. sir. You better mm. preach this word. Preach it. Mm. What good would be a dishwasher? Well. B. <laughs> that only wash the outside. The outside. Of the- okay. My what? God, just nasty, nasty. <laughs> You may be able to clean up your behavior so you look respectable in society, but mm-hmm. it's, there's still a core of self-centeredness wow. that stains everything you do and everything that I do. Mm-hmm. Better mm-hmm. preach, Bishop. Mm-hmm. 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 Stepping on everybody's toes this morning. I, my feet hurt. Oh, God. <laughs> what you say is ouch, and we keep it moving. That's keep it moving. That. I just want you to know my feet hurt. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Jesus mm. said this in Matthew 15, 18. Right. The things that come out of the mouth Uh-oh. come from the heart. And these make a man unclean. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Folks, it's not our outward behavior that makes okay. you unclean. It's the stuff that comes out of from your mouth. From, okay. Okay. On the the oh. Bible says that the heart of the problem is the problem of the heart. Oh. You want me to repeat that for you? The Bible says say it again. the heart of the problem mm-hmm. is the problem of the heart. All right, mm-hmm. now. That's, That's your root problem. But I'm not done yet. All right. The problem isn't your tongue. You may have a sarcastic tongue. What? Ooh. A sharp okay. tongue. <laughs> an angry tongue. A filthy tongue. Mm-mm. A sip town, a Boston town. Wow! But all that's doing is revealing what's in your heart. What's wow. in you? That's it. Wow. A judgmental town is evidence of a guilty heart. Mm. In other words, you point the finger and you say, "Check your heart first. All right, mm-hmm. Amen. Your active town is evidence of an unsettled heart. Wow. A boasting tongue is evidence of an insecure heart. Wow. A bitter tongue is evidence of a resentful heart. Resentful. Okay. A tongue is evidence of an angry heart. Mm-hmm. If what's inside, your heart is given away by what you say. Your mouth betrays what you are really like. That's right. Yeah. You say... When I said that, I just said it in anger. Mm-hmm. That's not really me. I don't know why I said that. It's That's exactly not you. Me. I just said it in angry. 
That's mm-hmm. not. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, Meant it. It's exactly you. Mm, because exposed. in your anger, you see the mass and the layers are pulled away. Yep. The real heart is revealed in your anger. Exposed. All and right. what's inside of you comes out when you get ticked off. Mm-hmm. Oops. Oops. Have you ever noticed how quick your mood can change when somebody challenges you or selfishness? Okay. When somebody Drop what you're doing and come bring in the groceries. Mm. I can raise my hand on that one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you can change. Yeah. And she said, well, all I asked you was to do was to bring in the groceries. That's all. Because what's in your heart is going to come out. Amen. It's like a toothpaste tube. <laughs> when you put it, <laughs> squeeze it. Inside is going to come out. Come out. And you can't take it back in. Mm, pull sure it back can. in. Sure the can. Bible is very specific about how selfishness expresses it, itself. In Galatians 5, 19 to 21, it says this. It lists actually 15 words, works of selfishness. Yes. 15 works of the flesh. The wrong things, the sinful self sinful self does are clear being sexually unfaithful uh huh did you know that infidelity is the ultimate expression yeah of self-centeredness ultimate i don't care what happens to anybody else i'm doing what pleases me continue mm-hmm. scripture hating mm-hmm. making trouble mm-hmm. being jealous mm being angry, being selfish, making people angry with each other, mm. causing divisions among people, feeling envy, being drunk, and doing other things like these. These are expressions of self-centeredness. Read yes. it, again. Galatians 5, 19, 19 to 21. To 21. Okay. Self-centeredness is so destructive. Mm -hmm. Yes. It destroys homes. We see that with the rising divorce rate. Pre-COVID, post-COVID, or now we have to live with COVID. Mm -hmm. How many homes have been destroyed by Mm -hmm. self-centeredness? It destroys little children. Yeah. It destroys relationships and marriages. It destroys friendships that has gone on for 20, 30 years. Mm. Then somebody within that friendship does a self-centered act and bam, it's over. Over. Self-centeredness has destroyed many a church. Yeah. It's destroyed communities. It can even destroy nations. My God. And we are seeing the decline right now of a great nation right now. Right now. That is consumed with self-centeredness. Yep. Amen. What is in it for me? Help us, God. I couldn't care less what happens to anybody else. Mm. What's in it for me? For me. How's it going to affect me? Bible warns us. Over and over again about the danger of self-centeredness. It was read to you this morning. Well, portion was. Galatians 5, 15 and 16. Mm-hmm. If you keep on biting and devouring each other. What a word picture that is. Mm, it is. Out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the of sinful the or the selfish nature. Amen. Folks, if you get nothing else this morning, I want you to get this. The primary truth I want to understand today. The primary task of life is learning to be unselfish. Mm. That's it. You see... Jesus is the ultimate example of unselfishness. Yes. 
He, we celebrated it last Sunday with communion. He gave himself sacrificially, unselfishly, because why? God wants you to become like Christ. Yes. He wants us to learn how to be unselfish. If you don't learn that lesson in life, you may learn all kinds of other things in life, but if you don't learn to be unselfish, that's the wrong answer. No, no. And you can learn anything else. But you have failed. Mm. You fail life. Wow. Because we're put here to learn how to be unselfish. And that is to be like Christ. The issue then becomes, how do I do it? That's what everybody wants to know. Yep. How do I be learn how do I learn to be other cent other centered instead of self centered? Self centered. It's not my nature. It's not natural for me to be that way. How can I be unselfish more or less selfish? How can I live in the spirit so I won't fulfill selfish desires? I have to face up to a couple of things, and I have to focus on a couple of other things, and I have to follow something if I am going to learn to be other-centered. How can I become more other-centered? Before I tell you what to do, let me tell you one way that doesn't work. I always like to give you this. One way that doesn't work is it's not just a matter of trying harder. Hello? Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. Well, okay, you're with me. We all know instinctively that doesn't work. You know, like, I'm just going to try to love people more. The great theologian Rodney King said, can't we all just get along together? Hmm. Come on, people now. Amen. On your brother. <laughs> Everybody get, get together. together and love one another. <laughs> another right now. Right now. People all over the world join hands. <laughs> yeah. Start a love train. <laughs> Try a little kindness. Yes. They're great songs, folks, but there's lousy theology. All right. That's work. It doesn't work because it takes more than human effort. Mm -hmm. If the best I could give you was to stand up here and say, let's all just try to be more loving. Let's all join hands together, church. Just love one another. Get on the love train. Right. <laughs> Next week, we'll come back and I can be, I can be, assure you that you will be more frustrated, you'll be more <laughs> discouraged, and you'll be more aloof from God. My Lord. You see, because legalism makes a barrier between God and you. Yes. It doesn't bring us to him. Human effort is a part of what I'm going to talk about, but you need to understand that your problem is much deeper then try it harder. Amen. Today, we're going to have to take some serious spiritual surgery. So get ready. You're going into oh. the operating room. Uh -oh. oh, boy. We haven't gone there yet. Because trying is not enough. Not enough. I have to face up to a couple of things. I have to focus on a couple of things. And I have to follow something. If I want to become more other-centered, number one, I have to face up to my sinful nature. Mm -hmm. That's the starting point. To fully and freely admit how selfish I really am most of the time. I'm so selfish, I don't even realize it half the time. <laughs> In fact, most of the time. I don't realize it when I'm being selfish. So it's not natural. Why? It's natural to me, not natural to my flesh. Okay. But it says I have to admit it. First John 1 8. 
every claim to be without sin, mm. we deceive ourselves. Yes, we do. Truth is not is in us. Not in you. You're not deceiving God, obviously. Okay. For you're not even deceiving other people. <laughs> they know you're not perfect. So you're just trying really to fool yourself. That's you're awesome. living in a self-imposed deception. If you don't think that everything in your life is stained by self-centeredness, because it is, even the good things sometimes that we do, you got a personal motivation behind it. Mm. Okay, I'm going to speak the scripture because I want that person to get saved. Mm. Is that Christ's motivation or is it yours? Amen. Take a record. All right. If you want better relationships, then you're going to have to ask God for a deeper awareness of your own self-centeredness more than you ever seen before. Wow. Mm. Need to pray and say, God, help me this week to see how self-centeredness how that mm. sticks every area of my life. My God. The thing God. that I do. Even the good things. Mm. Help me, Lord, to be aware. Because right now, many times, I'm not aware of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just naturally thinking of me all the time. Not you. I don't think about you. Mm. I'm thinking about me. So I need to get the antenna up and my spiritual sensitivity needs to my spidey senses need to go to effect god help me to be aware how much my own self-centeredness enters into the things i do or the things i say or the things i feel the way that i interact or react to other people in circumstances a good prayer would be psalm 139 verse 23 to 24 Search me, O oh God, mm. and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And know my S thoughts. Be any wicked way in me. In me. Yeah. Lead in the way everlasting. Yes. God, show me how much I think about me. Mm. Mm -mm. I have to be aware of that. The Bible tells us that when we take communion, we're to examine ourselves uh -huh, for we were right. last week of this first corinthians chapter 11 verse 28 says we ought to examine ourselves before we eat of the bread and drink of the cup mm -hmm. last week we were told of this and that's not because it's a great seeing a saying that elder lemay has come up with right this was to make you aware of what God's done for you and more aware of how bad you really needed what God needed to do for you. Mm. How bad we need a Savior. Yes. Because everything in your life is stained by self-centeredness. Everything. Mm. Number two. Yes. I have to face up to my disappointments in life. Come on, I'm going to come down and I'm going to knock on your door and I'm going to All walk right. down your street. Come on. And I'm going to invite myself through your door. Mm. To my major disappointments in life, the ways that I have been hurt. Mm -hmm. What does that have to do with self-centeredness, Pastor? A lot. Yeah. Because you can't deal with self-centeredness without dealing with disappointments. Mm. Jesus never sugarcoated anything, did he? Never, he never. Always told, he always told it like it is, it is. He was always straightforward. Cut to the chase. Mm -hmm. Never beat around the bush. Jesus tells us very clearly that we live in an imperfect world. Yes. In John 16, 33, he says, in the world, you will have trouble. Not you might. Will. You will. Not maybe. You will. Mm -hmm. 
Why? Because this is an imperfect world. Yes. Wow. Life is not fear. Nobody ever said it was. Nope. God never said it was fear. It is not heaven. All right. If you want to read about this, read the book Ecclesiastes. Jesus said, in the world you will have trouble. He could have said, in the world you will have disappointment. Mm. I want you today to be gut level honest about the disappointments you have had in life. I want you to think about them for just a moment. Because when you think about them, this is the way we actually grow. You've got to face it in order to deal with it. Resigning, moving away, running away from it doesn't help you to grow. Dealing with it helps you to grow. I have, I have counseled individuals, and I've found that most of the time when individuals reach a certain point in life, they want to throw up their hands and they want to give up. And they want to quit. But that does not help you to grow. No. What helps you to grow is that you stay the course. Amen. You stay in the midst of the furnace. Amen. And allow the Holy Spirit to use you in the midst of the furnace. When you give up and you quit, that's the easy part, folks. Okay. That's the easy way. You know... Here's, here's a thought, and we just talked about a wedding next Saturday. I don't know of anything that sets us up for greater disappointment than a wedding. <laughs> thank, thank you, Sister Darling. All right. Unrealistic expectations and attitudes that a new bride or groom Expect to have. Imagine what you go through six months prior to a wedding. Mm -hmm. All the all the running around, all the oh, surprise yes. parties, mm -hmm. the amount of attention that is put into this one event. And after this date, everything is going to be ultimate bliss. Ding 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 ding. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's a major letdown. Mm. Because the first morning you look at that bride and you see her without the makeup. Mm. <laughs> My no, Lord. No, he did not. Okay, he, he went. Oh, he not. went there. No, he did not. Okay, it, so it, it, <laughs> some of you are profoundly disappointed in your husband or your wife, and you haven't even wanted to face that. Now, some of you are profoundly disappointed or disappointed in a child. She didn't turn out the way you thought she was going to turn out. He didn't turn out the way you thought he was going to be. They don't look perfect. They don't act perfect. They don't have perfect intelligence. Help us, God. Help us. Mm. And mm -hmm. the straight A top of the cast, Clapton, captain of the football team that says, give me glory because I'm the parent of this special child. Mm. And you're disappointed. And you try to hide it, but your kids know. Mm. They can sense it. Yeah. Yep. Some of us are deeply disappointed in a parent. Or you may even be ashamed. Why couldn't I have parents like that guy down the street? Mm. They're sophisticated. They're so fantastic. They're so loving and smart. People love to go to their homes. My mom and dad are hicks. They're <laughs> doofuses, couch potatoes. <laughs> They're drunks, they're abusive, they're mentally unstable, they're poor, and you're disappointed in them. Mm. We all have some friends who disappoint us. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want us today to face those disappointments in your life. 
and that you've kept back and they're hiding under the surface. Because folks, life is disappointing. It's not a perfect world. And it isn't always fear. So why should I face up to my disappointments? A couple of reasons. What is at the root? Self-centeredness. Don't forget, I haven't left that word yet. Okay. <laughs> that is what is behind your disappointment. Because you come out with these answers. I deserve better than this. No, we don't. I don't deserve you. Mm. I deserve somebody better than you in my life. My God. Whoa. Because I'm better than you. Mm. <laughs> What is that? What is that? Yeah, what is that? Isn't that self-centeredness? Yeah, it sure mm -hmm. is. Oh, yeah. Disappointment. As long as you look to other people to meet your needs, mm. folks, you're going to be disappointed. You'll be disappointed. Oh, yeah. My husband will meet all my needs. Mm. You're going to be no. Going to be disappointed. My wife <laughs> will meet all my needs. You're still going to be disappointed. <laughs> mm. I think I'm going to have another girlfriend next week because I'm disappointed oh in the one this week. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> I have a right to do this because they hurt me. Mm. Wow. Nope. In other words, the world owes me. Mm. We see this all the time. I have the right to go rob this building because I was born in a depressed economic circumstance. No, you don't. No. There's no excuse for selfishness. Mm -mm. No excuse for self-centeredness. No matter how much you've been hurt. Never, never justified. What we do is get a little bit, a little scale in our mind and say, I know I did this. But you did this to me. I will always make sure that your scale has more on it. So I can justify my being selfish. Isn't that what? If you knew my pain, you know I'm this way. Mm. I don't know your pain. No. Nobody knows your pain except Jesus. Yes. Okay. Do know selfishness is never excusable. If you just understood just how much I hurt, I'm in no way this morning minimizing your pain. I'm not belittling it. I'm not negating it. Absolutely not. Some of you have had massive heartache. Massive pain. Major hurt. Mm. Life foundational shaking hurts. Mm -hmm. Hurts that no human being should ever have to deal with. Heartbreaking, gut-wrenching, life-stabbing, jabbing hurts. Mm. You've had those hurts, and I'm sorry. I really am. And God hurts with you. Because why? Jesus sees your hurt. Mm -hmm. He understands your hurt. He knows yes. your hurt. He can help you with the hurt, and he can heal you from that hurt. But there's an issue. That is far more damaging to your soul than anything anybody else that have ever done, even abuse. He he's coughing. <laughs> Bless him, Lord. It is something far more damaging to your soul 
because this one can keep you out of heaven. Hmm. You heard our point this morning of prayer. Mm -hmm. Not only for the one who has lost the loved one, but the, for the one, for the pain of the one who did it. Mm -hmm. That's the attitude that we as believers need to constantly walk in. Mm -hmm. We need to walk constantly. Jesus does want to help you with your suffering, but more than that, he wants to help you with your sin. What you are self-centered, when you are self-centered, you become just like the person who hurt you. Mm -hmm. My God. Because when they hurt you, they were expressing self-centeredness. And just because they were self-centered does not justify you doing the same. No. You're killing yourself. Some of you say, I've had this problem for years and years. Why am I not getting any better? Why am I not being healed? Why am I not feeling better? Because you are holding on to self-centered attitudes that keep you stuck in the pain. That's why you have to let go. Let go. In order to let go, you need to forgive. Amen. You have to release them. You have to face up to your own sinful nature and your own disappointments. Then you have to shift the focus. Focus on two other things. When I say this, first one, you're going to say, where is that coming from? <laughs> but if you want to be an unselfish and an unselfish uh, on self-centered person, you must learn to, three, focus more on the hope of heaven. The hope of heaven? How in the world does that relate? I'll tell you how it relates. Selfishness is always rooted in here and now thinking. It is the fruit of the here and now. When I think all that matters is here and now, and I never think about eternity, I tend to be self-centered. Mm -hmm. When I forget this, you know, this, this act, folks, is just a warm-up. 60, 70, 80 years of life on this side of eternity. But on that side of death, I will live for billions and billions of years. This is the warm-up act before the big event. Amen. And this, folks, is just a dress rehearsal. Hmm. This is kindergarten, folks. Preschool. If I don't realize that there's more to life than the here and now, I'm going to be selfish as I can. To get all I can out of the here and now. Hmm. If I think the only pleasure I'm going to get in life is the pleasure right here, mm. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for the gusto because you only go around once in life, right? Isn't that what they all say? That's what they say. Oh, yeah. No, we have one life. Oh, yeah, we only got one life to live, so I'm going to get it all now. <laughs> well, I'm going to feel it all, have it all, enjoy it all. If there's no heaven, and if there's no hell, then there are no consequences. And if there are no consequences, do whatever you want to do. Get drunk every night. Shoot up dope every, snort coke. Go get half a dozen bimbos and go to Bermuda. Mm. Mess around, be unfaithful as much as you want to. Use people all you want. Do them out, spit them out, go get somebody new. If there's no heaven and this, there's no hell, make the most of it now. Okay. Live for yourself. Be selfish. Live for your own pleasure. Don't care what anybody else thinks. Wow. Take advantage of people because it doesn't matter. <laughs> if there's no heaven and there's no hell. Right. 
I think that the only applause, the only applause I ever am going to get is on this earth. The only approval, the only affirmation, the only recognition is right here. You can better believe that I'm going to scratch and claw my way to the top, and I'm going to climb over everybody, and I'm going to step on everybody, so that my picture gets on that cover. My award goes on my shelf. Everybody bows down to me and say, oh, how great and wonderful you are. I'm going to do everything I can build to build up my status and my position and my fame. I want everybody to think, wow, you're great. Because if that's all there is, you are going to get as much as you can. The here and now. Okay, so I stuck with a couple of principles that we're walking through, right? On the other hand, there is a heaven and there is a hell. There is. And that changes the equation dramatically. Mm. It's because all of a sudden, if I remember that God has built an eternal home for me in heaven, as I trust him in Christ, and that he has promised to reward every secret, unselfish act that I do, whether anybody else sees it or not, or mm-hmm. I get credit for it or not, he is going to see it. And I'm living for an audience of one. One. And I realize that one day I'm going to share with God in his glory in eternity for many years. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. Is that going to change the way I act on this earth? Yes. Absolutely. All all of a sudden, I don't care if I get the award from people or not. That's right. That's great. It will only last 20 years. I don't care if any other person like me or reject me. Okay. I don't care if I'm not famous. I don't care if I'm not first in class. I don't care because my self-worth is not dependent upon what the world thinks of me. Mm -hmm. Based on what God thinks of me. That's right. That matters because that's what's going to matter for eternity. Mm -hmm. People, we need to wake up. Yes. There's more to life than here and now. That's right. And we live in attitude that all matters is right now, that I'm happy now, and that I have pleasure now, that I have possessions now. Be disappointed. I have popularity now, and that I have power now, and that I have fame now. You're going to live as a selfish little clod. Mm. But when I realize the hope of heaven, then it changes my perspective yes amen it's our priorities we look forward quote unquote to what we have not yet seen for mm-hmm. the trouble see will soon be over but the yes. joys to come last forever. forever for we know that when this earthly tent we live in has taken down mm-hmm. when we die and leave those bodies we will have a home in heaven an eternal yes. body Made for us by God Himself and yes. not by human hands. Not human hands. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Strongest Amen. attitude this morning, folks. Strongest antidote to self centered living is to live in the light of eternity. Amen. I understand that? It changes the way I live, it changes the way I treat people. In Matthew 25, as that judgment, He says, I was hungry, you fed me. Yes. Thirsty, you gave me drink. Mm -hmm. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick and in prison, and you visited me. Jesus is saying in that passage that the one thing we will judge, we will be judged for all at that judgment is how we treated other people. That's right. I focus on the hope of heaven. The other thing I need to focus on to be less centered. Is focus more on God's grace. Mm. God's grace to me. When you re- when you really do come face to face someday with your own sinfulness, your pervasive, it is 
in your personality to think of yourself first. And when you come to face it with your massive disappointments, you know what's going to happen. You're going to start getting discouraged. You're going to, you, you start getting down and discouraged because you realize everything you do, even the good things are staying with self-motivation. Mm. You start to get self-depressed or depressed. When you face your sin and you face your disappointments, don't let it depress you. Let it drive you to the magnificent grace of God. Amen. Every time you sin, God forgives. Oh, yes, bless he does. The uh, hallelujah. That is unbelievable to those mm-hmm. that don't believe. Mm-hmm. The grace mm-hmm. of God, where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Bad news, good news here. Bad news, everything you do is stained with sin. Mm-hmm. Good, news. Good news, everything you do is forgiven by God. Forgiven, forgiven. Amen. Hallelujah. I can relax. Mm-hmm. Rather than feeling down because I'm self-centered, I need to say, God, what a great God you are. Thank yeah. you. Jesus, what a wonder that you are. Mm. That you would save someone like me. A wretch like me. Mm. Yeah. You blow it. You call out to God like David did in Psalm 51. Amen. He committed adultery. He said, have mercy on me, God. Mm. According to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion. Mm. Blot out. My transgressions. The bad news. I'm always blowing it. Mm. Good news. God has always forgiven me. Yes Lord. The sin increases. Hallelujah. Grace. 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 How is that possible? Because of what Jesus did on the cross. Amen. Mm. Colossians 2.14 says. God canceled our debt. Which listed all the rules. We failed to follow. He took away that record with its rules and nailed it to the cross. This is an important act that Jesus wants us to remember how much it costs to pay for all your sins. Okay. That's why he gave us communion. And as as we take these elements, it reminds us of the magnificent grace of God. Last week as we shared that, I want you, like never before, to realize the depth of your own selfishness and the depth of God's grace to cover it so that you are completely forgiven. Not half forgiven, completely forgiven. forgiven. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, chapter 10, verse 13. Every time you are tempted, God will promise to make a way out. Ha, ha, ha. Every time. There's no temptation taken to you, but such that is common to man. man. God's faithful, who will with temptation make a way of escape, that you will be able to bear Bear it. it. That's the word. And that's why the last step this morning is follow the Spirit's leading. Remember that verse that said, live by the Spirit, and you won't gratify the desires of the self, sinful mm-hmm. name? It doesn't say you won't have those desires. That's right. You will have them the rest of your life. That desire to do the thing for you. It doesn't, ma- it doesn't say you won't be tempted. It says you won't fulfill them. You won't gratify them. Now you have to take the power or have the power to say no to selfishness. Mm -hmm. Inclination is so ingrained to think of myself, it takes supernatural power to break its grip. Come on here. We get our new life from the Holy Spirit, so we should follow the Spirit. We must not be proud or make trouble with each other or be jealous. Mm -hmm. Mr. West, what's the result for when I follow the Spirit of God in my life, 
Well, the Spirit produces these things, the nine fruit of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. They're not fruits. Fruit. All come mine. Love and joy, peace and patience, kindness and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Do you think your relationships would be in a different if you had those in there? Definitely. Compare that to the list of the works of the flesh. Hmm. Which, which says, when I'm living selfishly, I'm hating, making trouble, being jealous, getting angry, getting selfish, making people angry with each other, causing division, feeling envy. Two questions I have this morning. Which of those two lists describe your relationships most of the time? Hmm. Fruit of the spirit or the work of the flesh? Question number two. Which one do you want to represent your life? Mm. Fruit of the spirit or the work of selfishness? You can have the fruit of the spirit this morning. Love, joy, peace, patience. You can build relationships on those things. Mm -hmm. It's only one little problem. Can I name it this morning? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Need a new heart. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be I'm just going to try harder. You need a new heart because out of the heart comes the issues of, of life. life. Good news this morning that God transplants or God specializes in heart transplants. Mm-hmm. God bless you. Bishop Mel. Amen. 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 What, a, what a word this morning, everybody. Wow. We need a heart transplant. And I don't know if any of you are aware of the motto of Bethel Life Center, but the motto of Bethel Life Center is we are the place where you come to receive spiritual surgery for issues Choose of the of heart. The heart. Amen. Amen. That has been in place since the bishop and I sat down one day and the Holy Spirit said, oh, yes, this is the place where they come and receive spiritual surgery. Aww. We we all need a spiritual surgery. We all need a heart transplant. Amen. Because mm. the heart we were born with has its own nature and it is mm. not of God. Not of Amen. It is not, not of God. We need to go to the Lord for a heart transplant, a change of heart, a change of mind, a change of the way that we think. Bishop, you said one thing this morning that just really stood out to me. You said many things, but this really caught me. You said that we can't even be humble without bragging about it. Yeah. Yes. We got to tell, you know, if you have to tell people that you're yes, being that you're humble, humble. Yeah. how humble are you really? Amen. Amen. If you have to keep telling people you're a Christian. Thank you. Okay. And I'm going to just leave that dot, dot, dot. dot. dot, if, you dot. Gotta, if you got to remind people you're a Christian, right. maybe you need to examine yourself. Well. Right. Because without telling them, they should know who you are. Ah. Amen. If I got to ah. constantly remind you that I'm saved, then something is wrong. Mm, Jesus. You should be able to discern the difference between me and the world. Amen. Yes. And so, yes. as, as our elder always says, before we take communion, and even though we may not be physically um, partaking, we need to take the time to examine ourselves. Mm. Amen. Is it all about us or is it all about Jesus? Mm -hmm. Amen. I say to you this morning, it should be all about Jesus. Amen. Because when it is all about Jesus, we do not concern ourselves with fulfilling the lust of, our, of flesh. our flesh. Yeah. And so we thank the Lord for a very timely word on this morning, mm -hmm. a learning word, mm -hmm. a word that will cause us to look inside and see how much are we really projecting of who Christ is in mm -hmm. our lives, in our deeds, mm -hmm. in our how um, much, how much, no one should ever have to question and ask, are you, are you a Christian? Mm, they should automatically yeah. know. Amen. We all carry the same Holy Spirit. Yes. The spirit in me ought to recognize the spirit. Yes. In me. Yes. And then there should be no questions. And with that, I'm going to ask that um, evangelist.
Debbie would come forward and close us with the word of prayer. Okay. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Heavenly Father God, we just want to thank you for this day where we can just gather before you and just praise you for your unconditional love, for your yes. faith and your love for us. I thank you for covering covering your son this morning as he delivered a timely God. message. Mm. Father, mm -hmm. Father, continue to cover him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet thank as he God. continues to be obedient, subservient, and humble to your word and to mm. Jesus, Father. Father, I want to ask that you will forgive every single one of us in the sound of Lord, my today. Yes, God. self-centeredness, Father. Help us. Father, forgive us, especially myself, for holding on to those past hurts, Father, mm -hmm. and not realizing that I truly was being self-centered because it was all about me instead of how you want things to be done. Mm -hmm. Father, forgive us for thinking that we're better than Jesus. That he help us. hurt and pain and, and lies and dissatisfaction to be jumped and slapped and spit on, yet he still asked mm -hmm. for forgiveness and loved us as he hung on the cross. He still mm. asked the Father to forgive us. So who are we not yes. to forgive? Give someone who has offended us, Father. Who yes. are we to hold grudges for years, Father? When mm -hmm. you yourself said, if you want uh, you to forgive us, that we must. It's not an ask. It's a okay. Come on, that we wow. must also forgive. So, Father, I want to ask you to cover all of those people who have hurt us. Father, that right Jesus. now, at the sole of your throne, at the foot of your throne, that right now we release it. We submit it to you, Father. Uh, you, God. Right In the name of Jesus. Like the wind. And that we will just thank you, Father, that you gave us the strength because your word says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens mm. Oh, and in the midst of that heartbreak, in the midst of that disappointment, Jesus was standing right there, Father, holding Yes. Him comforting us and in some cases carrying us father mm. when we could not go any further so father mm. we just thank you we bless you we adore you that as we go throughout uh, this week father that when we wake up every morning ask you lord help me to be more other centered than self-centered yes father. god father, when we wake up that we will ask you father help us to love others the way you have loved us father mm. when we wake up ask help us to ask what can i do for for others instead of what others can do for me. Yes. So we love you. We are Jesus. I thank you for this once again on time message. Father, your word says yo, it's like a double edged sword that can mm -hmm. cut heart, bone, and marrow, Father. Your yes. word sharpens word iron sharpens iron, and we were sharpened this morning, Father. Yes, Lord. Amen. As the apostle said, my toes hurt this morning, Father, but I thank you. Thank I thank you. you for the hurt, Father, because just like an olive, we got to get crushed. We got to get pressed, okay, mm. in order for that oil to flow, Father. Yes. So mm. just thank you. We adore you. We love you. And we give you the highest praise as we end this service and go about the rest of this week doing as you have commissioned us to do. Love each other as you have loved us and to make disciples of all nations. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.